Holmes is almost the icing on the cake. Hmm. Could be also a winner here. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> but then the mystery house rises to the occasion. Wow. I said I wasn't going to say wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We always manage to get a wow out of people. Today we're in North Devon, and it was here ten years ago that the Devonians voted the humble primrose to be their floral emblem. And you understand why, because the hedgerows are thick with it in these spring months. And that's partly to do with the moist soil here and the very temperate climate. And here's an interesting primrose fact, because I know you want one. There are 30 species native to the UK, but more than a thousand worldwide. But there's more to Devon than just pretty flowers. Lying in the southwest of England, Devon shares its eastern border with the counties of Somerset and Dorset. The county is a mecca for adventure lovers, and close to Devon's coast is the Tarka Trail, a 31-mile foot and cycle path. The trail runs from Braunton to Meath via Barnstable and Biddeford, winding along old branch railway lines that were closed in the 1960s. Further east, the Exmoor National Park covers an area of 267 square miles, making it one of England's smallest parks. However, it supports great diversity, with its landscapes ranging from moorland to green valleys. It's also home to the Exmoor Pony, a breed which is thought to have roamed free here since the 11th century. Generally in Devon, your money goes further up here on the north coast than it does down south, and that's largely to do with transport links. It's trickier by road and rail to get to pretty little coastal towns like this one, Instow, than it is their southern equivalents, because they have big railway links and motorways. Still, the whole county is pretty expensive. The average price for a detached house here is £290,000 at the moment. That's £35,000 above the national average. Still, it's a good time to be buying because house prices are at their lowest since 2009. Devon offers a varied mix of architectural styles. In the popular coastal villages and ports, the price of a two-bedroom period cottage can start at around £200,000. Of course, those prized houses with sea views can cost up to 50% more. Inland, the Devon Longhouse is found throughout the county. Often dating back to the 15th century, these invariably have thatched roofs. Prices for these historic homes can range from 500,000 to well over a million pounds. But Devon is perhaps best known for the chocolate box style cottages in the county's valleys and hamlets. For a slice of this rural dream, expect to pay from around 230,000 to about 500,000 pounds. Devon has many architectural riches, but are they riches that would interest today's buyers? Let's meet them. Bob and Sue, his wife of 17 years, met at work in the Ministry of Defence IT department and have been living in their modern four-bedroom home in Bicester, Oxfordshire for over a decade. But their escape to the country has been on the cards for a long while. We've been looking to move for probably about three years now and we've looked at, physically looked at about half a dozen houses and on the internet we've looked at hundreds. Having lived in, in towns and in, in sort of rural locations, it is definitely the countryside that we, we want to move into. Bob will continue to work from home for a while, but as Sue's recently closed her cake decorating business, she's a free agent and looking forward to a more peaceful lifestyle. I dream of a quieter life, something with a bit less hassle, a bit less traffic. I'd like to be able to walk my dogs on the beach compared with walking them around a busy MOD town. And it's the west of England that has cast its spell on them. We really love North Devon because you drive along the, the road, once you get off the M5, you drive along that road towards Barnstable and the road between Barnstable and Biddeford and you feel that all of your cares have gone. It's a real <sighs> sort of feeling. And that's the feeling I want to have every day. Along with a minimum of three bedrooms, there's a short list of priorities for their future home. I do need a study um, uh, or the ability to make one. Uh, we dabble a bit in, in vegetable growing now, but only on a small scale. So we want to expand the, the sort of vegetable growing. And the large garden also needs to be able to 
have a, uh, either an outbuilding for mum so that we can give it to an annex at, at some stage in the future, um, or be able to have a sort of lodge style building. Um, so the size of the garden is very important to us. And growing veg aside, there are definite plans for making their hobbies work for them. I like making cakes. I uh, have been doing that for 25 years as a business, and I've made over 20,000 cakes, mainly weddings, birthdays, christenings, but I will still be making cakes. One of the things that I've been getting into recently is, is bread baking, and that's one of the things I, I, I definitely want to do when we move. Um, and coupled with Sue's cake making, um, we think that we could get involved in farmers markets and, and hopefully, you know, with hobbies that we enjoy. Also, that will be getting involved in the local community and maybe even they'll pay for themselves. With money in mind, it's time to pinpoint the budget. The budget for the new house is £400,000. If we found something that had an annex already done, we may be able to push to £450,000. Bob and Sue are particularly interested in finding a new property in the Biddeford or Barnstable area of Devon. And I caught up with them in its wonderful landscape to discover more about what they're looking for. So, Bob and Sue, welcome to lovely Devon. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're a Devon boy, aren't you? I am indeed, yes. I, um, I left Devon when I was 17 to join the army and haven't really been back. And uh, I think it's about time I came home. And what are your sort of top priorities for the property? Um, I, I'm looking for a bit of character, so, you know, from my Devon roots, I just remember travelling around the countryside and seeing these, these beautiful Devon houses, so I'd like something with a bit of age, with a bit of character. And I'd really like a large kitchen diner. We have a, an, an eating kitchen diner at the moment, so I'd quite like to keep that. I mean, you've got a budget of how much? Well, £400,000 if... Um, you could find us something that's got um, an outbuilding that maybe we could convert later on. That's um, for your mum. That's for my mum, might, yeah. My mum will you. come and join us eventually, I think, but it's not essential now. Um, Does the budget stretch for the annex? It will stretch. If we, ha if we have an annex already done, we could go to 450. Right. Well, that's a good, healthy budget for this part of the world, and there are some beautiful properties that we found for you, so oh, come with me. Oh, very Excellent. excited. Thank you. <laughs> For their absolute maximum budget of £450,000, Bob and Sue would like a character property with a minimum of three bedrooms, a large kitchen diner for baking and cake making, a study so Bob can work from home, a garden large enough for vegetable growing, and an annex with future potential as a granny flat. We'll be showing them around three properties carefully selected with their demands in mind. And at each one, I'll ask them to guess the price before I reveal it. One of these is, of course, our mystery house, where, if they're lucky, they can have their cake and eat it. So, let's hit the road. And Sue, so the dog walking is quite a key factor in the whole lifestyle thing, isn't it? It is, yes. We've got two collies, so one who's fairly active and one who's very active. So, yeah, um, they definitely need two walks a day. So it's, um, it is a consideration for us. We've made the journey around seven miles northeast of Barnstable to the village of Loxor. Set in stunning countryside, which is perfect for walking with the dogs, this location has a small but thriving community based around an active village hall committee. Our first property is a grade two listed barn conversion that was originally part of an 18th century dairy farm and is constructed from local stone and slate. Here we have house number one. Wow. That's lovely. That's certainly got some character, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> it has character. Yeah, it's but lovely it... and quiet. I'm impressed. Yeah? Yes, yeah. it's lovely. I love Definitely. the stone. Yeah. The stone yes. is beautiful. Can't wait to go inside. Yeah. I'm very excited. I'm not going to make you wait. <laughs> oh, thank you. The inside of this property, which was fully renovated 15 years ago, still retains as much stunning character as the exterior, something I'm sure Bob and Sue will appreciate. Here we get the full feeling of the property. Well, it's a nice Lovely. size. I love, love the beams. Love the beams, yes. Yeah, yeah. This is actually one piece of wood, well, a tree, basically, split in two. Wow. Amazing. 
It, it's got that mix of the, the, the modern with the old, with the beams especially. Mm -hmm. So it is a nice symmetrical rim, I like it. And also here, which is nice, this is where they would have driven in the carriages, uh, but it makes a nice sunny window mm. and you can open those out. Beautiful. It's lovely. Mm. Gin and tonic in the evening on the, on the terrace? Mm, exactly. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> sounds nice. So they're already imagining relaxing here, which is a great start. And just past this games room area, which could work well as a home office, we come to the all-important kitchen. Wow. Oh, yes. This is lovely. Definitely. Really um, nice. This is gorgeous. I like the floor. Mm -hmm. Great for the dogs. Love the cooker. And there's lots of work space. And also, we've got a large kitchen table. Um, so plenty so of room that for that, fit. for dining. Yeah. Yeah. Our friends, and we do a lot of socialising. Um, which we always intend to go in the dining room, but always end up staying in the kitchen. Well, there is a quite a big sort of utility room, and that goes through into the double garage. Okay. So there's potential there about maybe expanding the floor plan a little bit. Mm -hmm. But that's pretty much the downstairs. It's quite a simple layout. It's mm -hmm. three big rooms, really. It's lovely. Yeah. Really yeah. nice. As you say, it, it's compact, but it has everything we need. So it's all positive on the ground floor. Meanwhile, upstairs, there are three very generously sized double bedrooms, two of which are currently being used for children, and one with plenty of storage with its built-in double wardrobe. There's also a spacious family bathroom, but we're heading for the room Bob and Sue could be calling their own. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is pretty. <laughs> Got yeah, some pretty wacky lights um, in, that, in yeah. that ceiling. I'm not sure about the work to take them out, but <laughs> they do change colour. Wow. Mm. Oh, it might keep mm. them then. <laughs> yeah. It's a lovely size. It's a good space, def yeah. definitely. Yeah. I mean, you've got three big size rooms, but this one does have an ensuite shower room mm -hmm. and lots of, lots of storage. Covers. I think I might get my clothes in there. It's <laughs> knowing for yours. <laughs> Thank you. No yours. You've got three other rooms <laughs> for that yeah. yeah. because I know that you have a lot. I need them, yeah. <laughs> uh, but in terms of looking ahead to your mum moving mm -hmm. in, that's a slight issue because there isn't an obvious annex. But let's have a look on the outside and see what possibility there is, because we can buy a lodge and place it on part of the land. So there, there's an option. I like your thinking. It leads me neatly outside. Bob is spot on, and outside there's plenty of room for them to build a lodge and grow vegetables. Mainly laid to lawn, the garden has spectacular views of the surrounding countryside. And there's also a pond and a decked patio area, which is ideal for al fresco socialising. All of this up here is yours. So it's about two-thirds of an acre. It's a lovely size, um, mm. um, and it, it's wonderful for the dogs. And, and certainly it still gives us the option to, to put a lodge on, on one part of the land yeah. for, for Mum. Mm, definitely potential. Depending on price, of course. So what do you think the price is? I'm going to be a bit conservative and say 385 Sue? I would say it's probably closer to our, our first budget, so around 400 <laughs> You've been watching the show more. <laughs> yeah, you're exactly right. It's actually on the market for £400,000. But then we knew that to get the annex, we would have to stretch our budget. Quite. So why don't you have a look around inside, um, and I'll see you at the front. OK. okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. A very good first house. Tested the water. I think they were very keen on the kitchen. I wonder whether the, the annex will be a deal-breaker. But we've got two more houses after this one, so wait and see. On the market at £400,000, this house has plenty of character, as well as a large farmhouse-style kitchen, four double bedrooms, a study area for Bob, and two-thirds of an acre of grounds, with space to erect a lodge and grow veg. Liked the flow of the house. Um, the kitchen was lovely, lots of worktop, plenty of room for our table. There's plenty of options for bedrooms and studies, etc., that, that, that I would need. Um, the one thing that it hasn't got, of course, is an annex. Uh, we would have to look into that. Up here, up in the corner, sort of a bit secluded, we could put the lodge for Mum. Definitely. Mm. Um, clear this whole area. Then she's got a, a, a large garden area that she could tend herself. Yeah, because she likes pottering around with her pots and things, doesn't she? Yeah, so... exactly. You one of these in every house. Guys? Ah, are you done? Yes, I think so. Come on up, pull the door behind you. Big smiles? Yes. yes good mm. smiles? Really Very good nice. start. Good. Well, let's go and see the next one.
Many of the towns that hug North Devon's dramatic coastline became popular holiday destinations in the late Georgian and early Victorian era. A prime example is Ilfracombe, where the grand 18th and 19th century villas, terraces and whitewashed houses are a vivid architectural reminder of its mass expansion at that time. Sighted a few miles further along the coast, in Heel Bay, is a historic water mill, which today is still producing flour. We sent them along to get a taste of the flour production process from current millers David and Kathy Jones, who escaped to the country themselves several years ago. I think you're very brave to take on such a mammoth task. I mean, it's quite a responsibility, isn't it, to, to safeguard this for future generations? Well, if it's your passion, then it's, it's not such a chore. I look after the maintenance of the mill and its history, and Cathy, she looks after the tea rooms and the cottages, and um, we're both enjoying our new roles. Yes, yeah, good. This Grade two listed water mill dates back to at least 1525. It became derelict after the Second World War, but was rescued in 1973, and is now a working museum. Its 18-foot cast-iron overshot water wheel runs on water that flows from the local valley. With all mills, one of their problems is that when there isn't enough water, there isn't enough wind, then you have to have other means of power to generate them. And in our case, we have a big old national engine from the 1920s, all connected with belts all the way through the mill via the water wheel, so it acts as a giant flywheel back to the stones so we can mill when there's no water whatsoever. Although, of course, that, that's going to add to your costs because water is free. Exactly, exactly. Mm. I don't think our mill will ever be one of the ones that actually makes its money out of flour. Because we use only organic grain, we have to go quite far afield to get our product. Would you like to actually see the wheel turning round? Be oh, fascinating. Definitely. Okay, well, let's, let's open up the top sluice gate. And now, after a couple of seconds, the water will come down, hits the buckets. You can just hear it in the background. And after a couple of seconds, we're underway. Oh, there she goes. And now you can... Here in the background, they're the drive belts. They would drive other pieces of machinery, so you'll be able to sieve the grain from all the wheat from the chaff. The grain is processed through chutes down into a hopper and then into a device called a shoe. This is shaken at a speed of 110 revs per minute. The grain then slowly falls into the stones, where it's ground into flour. Keen Baker Bob couldn't wait to get hands-on with the milling process. And what you're always looking for is if there's any um, small seeds that have made it through the, the sieving process. So you're, you're looking for something that doesn't look like wheat. You've been monitoring that all the time. All the time. Feeding. All the time. Pour in a, a handful of um, grain yeah. and then just check for seeds. OK. Because being an organic product, it hasn't been so heavily refined. Yes. And you still find elements of the field which have still made it into uh, the, the sack of wheat. Once it's ready, Sue is standing by to collect the finished product. You're weighing to the yellow mark, and then we're going to bag that up. So, your very first bag of flour. Well done. And David's wife, Cathy, has cooked up a treat with the flour in the kitchen, preparing a traditional Devon tea with wholemeal scones. Proper Devon cream tea. From the mill to the mouth. Bob and Sue have definitely got a flavour of what it could be like to run their own small baking business right here in Devon. For our second property, we're travelling around 10 miles southeast of Barnstable to the edge of the village of Umberley, a community of pretty whitewashed cottages sitting in the attractive rural setting of the Tor Valley. The local residents have access to nearby towns via the Tarka Line, an hourly rail service that joins Barnstable and Exeter. And there's also a good range of amenities, such as a village hall for social gatherings, post office and an antiques shop. Considering its proximity to the Tarka Line, our second house is unsurprisingly an old railway worker's cottage, which is constructed from local stone and dates back to 1880. This is probably one of the best approaches that I've done on the show. Very pretty. It's gorgeous, isn't it? It's absolutely stunning. It's very, very pretty. That's number two. Could have be on to a winner here. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> it's quite it's, it's probably everything that I would I would tick from the outside. Mm. It's a beautiful property, but it also has options for the annex. 
we talk about the ones in the house, but it also has this amazing, beautiful, old, stone-built mm. hay barn. And it's not listed. So there's much more flexibility in mm. what you do here mm. than in the first property. Definitely. Very Definitely. Should we take a peek inside? Yes, please. It would be hard to beat this home for curb appeal. And I think we could also be onto a real winner with the kitchen diner. Come on in. Straight into the kitchen diner this oh, time. Oh, wow. Whew. This is lovely. Yeah, exactly uh, what we were looking for. I mean, the island, I love. I can imagine you know, baking bread and working on that surface. So, uh, yeah, this is still a hit. Yes, lovely. Hit with you? Yes. Can you do some good baking in here? Definitely. Nice big space here. Yeah. And if you come this way, this is sort of a mezzanine floor above a sort of double-height dining room. And then you've got here this beautiful sort of astral glass oh. yeah. arched... Okay. Door there. Makes it very light in here. Very light. Isn't it? And then upstairs is a sort of TV room, sitting room. Could make a nice study. Could be. You're very quiet. Is that because you're bowled over or because you're mm. thinking? I'm just taking it all in. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> OK. <laughs> Could it be that Bob is keener on this property than Sue? Let's see if the sitting room can get her talking. Oh, it's very sweet. It is. Mm. Uh, very cosy, isn't it? It's an interesting shape. I like the quirkiness of it, all the little nooks and crannies. Often these railway cottages were just one single space, and they've divided it up and remodelled it over the years. But I think they've done a really nice job of keeping kind of quite spacious proportions. Mm. Also on this floor is a boot room, handy after those long walks with the dogs. It adjoins a shower room with a lovely flagstone floor. Along from here, there's another room with a log burner, which is currently being used as a bedroom. On the first floor, there are two further bedrooms with original oak flooring and enough space for a double bed in each. There's also a charming family bathroom with a freestanding bath, as well as a master bedroom for Bob and Sue. It's the biggest of the three upstairs. Mm. Well, that's not a bad size, actually. No, it's not bad at all. So there are three bedrooms upstairs, and there is a, what they call a fourth bedroom downstairs, which just could be an office or... Well, up to you, really, what you want it for. Potentially a, mm. a bedroom for, for Mum, uh, especially while we're waiting to, to do the outside, if we, if, we do, yeah. if we do that. That's an option. With Bob still mulling over the annex possibilities, we're heading to the garden, which covers around two-thirds of an acre and includes a walled vegetable garden. Out we step. Now, what do you think of this sized garden? This is ideal. Just the sort of veg gardening that I think I could handle and enjoy as a hobby. Now, let's talk about the annex, because you can see here a couple of options. One possibility, which I think might work, is, is to extend out this way. Remember, there's no listing on the building, so you could extend out this way. That, that little lean-to there is where the downstairs <laughs> bathroom is. If they don't want to extend the house, the other option for Sue's mum is the stone hay barn, which, with the right permissions and some imagination, could work as a living space. It's a beautiful building and it could easily be something quite spectacular, but it's planning and cost. Mm. But before you have a look round, I wanted to talk the price of this property. What do you think it's on the market for? I would think it's around 395 I think this is... A bit more than that, and I would say it's around 415. Well, with uncanny accuracy, you are spot on again. <laughs> it's actually no. on at 395, and it's only been on a week, and there's been lots of interest. Mm, I'm not surprised, it's very pretty. Mm. But why don't you have a look inside that building and look around the house indeed, and I'll see you at the front. Okay, thank you. thank you. Thank you. On the market for £395,000, which is just within their budget for a house without that ready-made annex, this impressive property offers a good-sized kitchen diner for entertaining, four bedrooms, a choice of rooms for Bob to use as a study, two-thirds of an acre of land with a walled vegetable garden, and an old hay barn, which is ripe for conversion if they can get the right planning permissions. The driveway is just gorgeous, and the, the, the property itself is very good-looking. And what a beautiful kitchen it is, with that lovely island. Everything was um, ticking the boxes at that stage. The 70s 
sitting room is okay. I could live with it. Um, but I was a bit disappointed in the upstairs space. Um, the outside space was fine and the potential for my mum was definitely there. We could extend out here um, to give us the, the room we needed for mum. Yeah, but also I was thinking that if you really wanted to, because the upstairs, as we said, is a bit small, yeah. you could bring that all the way out and extend the whole house and then we could have a larger bedroom with maybe an ensuite. Yeah, that's a definite option. Hello. Hello. You done? Yes, Did you see you. everything? I think so. Yes, I think we saw the, the whole house, yes. Ready for a rest? Yes. Oh, that would be good. As the sun sets over the stunning North Devon coastline, we say farewell to a very promising first day of house hunting. Bob the baker and Sue the cake maker are cooking out plans for a great escape from the town of Bista to North Devon. While they'll both be spending a lot of time in the kitchen, Bob needs a study to work from home, and they'd like an annex for Sue's mum to join them later on. So far, they've been bowled over by a barn conversion, but not quite so swayed by a country cottage. However, coming up, the mystery house could be just the place for them to loaf around in. Imagine some cosy nights in here. Yeah, it's just... Mm. I don't know what to say, really. <laughs> and my carriage awaits as I investigate a bygone transport of delights. We're having the most phenomenal spring weather here in Devon. It's the sort of weather where I would buy any house that was put in front of me. But Bob and Sue are showing much more restraint. In fact, we were a bit surprised that they didn't love the house that we all thought they were going to love yesterday afternoon. So for the mystery house, we're swinging in a different direction. Now, there are plenty of four-bedroom houses that they might like in Devon, but this property offers them a certain special something that's going to beef up their baking ambitions and also give their mum somewhere to live. What do you think the mystery house is going to be? At the moment, you've shown us two properties with annex potential. Um, I think you may well look at something that has an annex already done, which would probably either be at the top or maybe stretch our budget. We may. Yes. We've travelled 19 miles inland from Barnstable to the large village of Lapford, set deep in sheep farming country, but still only 30 minutes drive from the coast. This community has a range of pretty character cottages and a versatile post office, which also provides banking facilities, plants for sale and dry cleaning. There's also a 16th century pub, which is within walking distance of our mystery house. This old bakery, dating back to 1790, was still in use right up to the 1960s. It could be perfect for Bob and Sue in so many ways, but there is one compromise. This used to be, guess what? Think about what you do. What do you like to do? A bakery. It used to be the bakery. <laughs> mm. And we thought, now we can't resist showing them this. And the fascinating thing about this, or the great thing about this for you, is that it has a fully functional annex. Excellent. Fantastic. Ex Excellent. Very excited. It's very pretty. It's not something I would have picked to look at, but it, yeah, it's very pretty and I love the village. Lapford and this old bakery seem to have hit the mark. And as this home provides plenty of the ingredients that Bob and Sue love, I think we should start our tour in their favourite place, the kitchen. Wow. I said I wasn't going to say wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We always manage to get a wow out of people. Yeah. I really like this. That floor's lovely. Mm. It's gorgeous, isn't it? There's, there's just so much to see. Mm. I'm just trying to take it all in. Is it going to be big enough for you guys? Yeah, I would say I so. so. There's plenty of work surface um, and, and an area for, for a table if we needed it. Mm. So, yeah, at the moment, I, I'm uh, very happy. It's the sweet smell of success for the kitchen and the sitting room could keep those smiles coming. Wow. This is lovely. Really, really. I said I wasn't going to say, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sorry, how Twice many wows have house. you had already? <laughs> <laughs> and you do have some really spectacular beams running through. They're just beautiful. They are beautiful, aren't they? And a nice fireplace, an open fire. That looks... Imagine some cosy nights in here. Yeah, it's just... 
And to ensure we keep them happy, I'm going to show them the three-story annex, a potential space for mum, which is accessible through the sitting room area. Wow. Goodness. Oh, mum would love this. Mm. So you've got this kitchen sitting room with its own door onto the street. Okay. And then upstairs there's a bathroom and bedroom, I suppose, and then above that there's another room. I mean, the, the downside, I suppose, is that there are three sets of stairs mm -hmm. for your mum, but she's quite spry at the moment. She, she is, is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. And until the time that she decides to come to Devon, you could also very easily rent it as a holiday let. That's a really a good really idea. A really good idea, mm. yeah. Yeah, I like that, because it, it then doesn't say to mum that there's something here waiting for her. Um, you know, she can come on uh, weekends whenever she feels like it, then when she's ready, it's hers. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And I quite like the idea of a separate income as well. There are some really good options for our buyers in this property. The upstairs of the main house has three generous double bedrooms with space for large wardrobes in each, along with a recently fitted family bathroom. And then this bedroom has an ensuite. So they're not huge. No, but it's big enough for us. This is not the one they use as a master, but it makes sense to have it because you've got the ensuite. It's, um, I'm still happy. Really? Yeah, yes. yeah. They both seem really smitten with this property. It's even got Bob dancing with glee. And before we go outside, there's a bit of a bonus in this next room, just off the kitchen. So this, I think, is a really fascinating room. Oh, wow. This was the old bakery. Oh, right. And it was a steam oven bakery. Very unusual for the time uh, and very successful. People would come and they'd bring their food and it would be baked during the day and they'd come in the evening and pe pick it up for five pence. But you can see it's still got the two ovens on both sides. That's an amazing feature, isn't it? Um, the only thing that there isn't at the moment in my mind is a, uh, a study. I'm not sure where I would work, um, seeing that I work from home quite a lot. Mm. Well, this is an option and then let's go outside. This is, unfortunately, the kicker with this property. Because mm. this is your garden. Ah, and it was all going so well. Oh, this is it? Just this space? Just this. This is it, I'm afraid. Mm. Oh, what a shame. <sighs> yeah, um, we, we really couldn't live with a garden this size, not with two pretty large dogs. No. But he, even just as a, a social space, it, it wouldn't work for us. Even with the Lapford Steam Bakery sign. Yeah, that's fab. Can, can we move that somewhere else? <laughs> How much do you think it's on the market for? If it had outside space, I would have said way over our budget. It, it, it had to be nearer 500. Without that, I'm still going to say it's 450. I think it's a little bit less than that, but probably not much, so about 435. Well... In this instance, you're both spectacularly wrong, because it's on the market for £350,000. Wow. <sighs> Somebody's going to get a bargain. Yeah. Provided they don't need outside space. Such a shame. This unique property came frustratingly close to perfection and is on the market for well below their budget at £350,000. It has a spacious kitchen breakfast room, three double bedrooms, a three-storey annex perfect for Sue's mum, and a courtyard garden, which turned their thumbs up into a thumbs down. Walking into the, the kitchen, my, my heart skipped almost. It, it was like, yes, this is it. Uh, I have to say it was, it was everything that, that um, we were looking for, I think. And then to find that it had an annex, you know, a, a ready-made annex, was, was stunning. But such a shame about the outside space. Um, it was just a, an absolute killer. Um, there was no way we could deal with, with two dogs out there, let alone grow any sort of vegetables, and we probably wouldn't have much room for very many flowers either. So it was such a shame, because otherwise it's such a beautiful property. Guys, are you done? Hello. Are you, are you kind of... OK, deep breath. Yes. Gutted. Pretty gutted. Oh, don't say that. I don't want to come with me. We'll talk about it.
As a designated area of outstanding natural beauty, the North Devon coast has a range of protected beaches, villages and historic houses. One such property is the grand Regency Mansion of Arlington Court, near Barnstable, which is set in a 2,700-acre estate in the River Yeo Valley. Its stable block houses one of the best collections of 19th century horse-drawn vehicles in the country. So I've come here to meet Anna Chilak to find out a little bit more about this key chapter in our transport history. This one is as good as it gets but with carriages. This one belonged to the Earl of Craven and I love it because it's yellow, it's bright, it's trimmed with silver. It's a really grand vehicle. So what sort of period is this? Is this very early or is it...? Oh, these state coaches were around all through the 1800s. This one was built in the second half of the 19th century. Oh, right. This was um, a vehicle that you'd have used on grand occasions, so the state opening of Parliament, society, weddings. But I always marvel how you actually get into these. I see, they're very high. If you yeah. were a fancy lady, that's not going to be elegant, is it? Well, you know, Just you have to be elegant. And there is a, a cunning way of getting in. Shall we have a look inside? Yes, do. There we go. The very nice bouquet. Look at the colour. is amazing underneath. Mm. And this here is, is a range of steps which ah, we can just fold down. Like Do, yes. Oh, look. Look at that. So in your long, elegant frock, you'd be able to climb up very easily. Also in the collection, you'll find some carriages familiar from historical literature. For example, the barouche, which is mentioned in Jane Austen's novels. At the turn of the 19th century, this was the ultimate vehicle for taking the air and seeing society. And then there's the hansom cab, a common sight in the streets in Victorian times. These were dubbed the gondolas of London and evoke vivid images of Dickens and Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes. So this is one of our two travelling chariots, and I think they're fascinating, mm. really. You, as a gentleman, would have travelled inside your servant would have gone on the back. And can you see the strange can, um, flap at the front? Well, this one, you can arrange it so that you can lie flat and stretch oh, your legs yeah. into this area here. So it's like a business class. It is very much like business class, yes, with its recliner in there. Oh. If you wanted to go to Italy for the Grand Tour, that's quite a distance, and we just take it for granted we can hop on a plane and fly there. If you wanted to go to Italy in the 1700s, 1800s, you'd have gone in a carriage like this. Time for me to have a grand tour of my own around the estate here at Arlington. I'm about to take the reins of a carriage led by two of their working horses, Eric and Mr Phipps. I'll also have a little help from my own coachman, David Brookfield. How are you doing? OK, you OK, then? Can I just hop up? Yep, find a way. Oh, there's a handbrake. That's good. Yes, yes. Footbrake. Handbrake is on. Oh, so, you're very high up. Yeah, it's, um, you need to be able to see where you're going. And as the, the horses are quite tall, you need to be even taller. No seatbelt? No. <laughs> right, right, so you're cool. going to drive us up the other. So walk on. Nice and steady. Right, bring that right rein right round there. That's it. Pretty responsive. It's like power steer. Yes. The age of the carriage came to an end at the turn of the 20th century with the advent of the internal combustion engine, making huge changes to the pace of everyday life. <sighs> it's not a bad job, is it? No. <laughs> but this wonderful mode of travel remains an important part of our transport heritage. Time to uh, leave my coachman-like ways behind and find out how Bob and Sue are doing thinking about those properties. Well, the heavens have certainly smiled on our week in Devon. It's been gorgeous. And I was just wondering how your week has been and particularly what you thought of the houses that we showed you. Perhaps we could start with the first one. What did you think of house one? I loved house number one. I think that was pretty close to what we need. It had lots of possibilities possibilities for the annex. The grounds were um, excellent and I liked the flow of the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. I fell in love with it and it, it just feels right. The second house, 
was a great approach. It looked beautiful. Um, the downstairs kitchen dining room was lovely. But the more we went around the house, I didn't feel that it flowed the same as the first house. And um, the upstairs was definitely smaller than I expected. Um, there were possibilities there for an extension. There are lots of options with that house, without a doubt. But it's about time and money. Mm. What about the third house, the mystery house? I think had that house have had the outside space, we would have seriously considered it. Mm. It was just the outside space that really killed it for me completely. You nearly killed me too with your <laughs> sorry. heartbreaking, so crestfallen sorry. <laughs> faces as we uh, walked out into the courtyard. Yeah, we do realise that we have to compromise somewhere, but that's just a compromise a bit too far. So what happens next? Are you going to visit any of the properties again? Or? Yeah, yes. Um, we, we think we'll go back and see property one. That one opened my eyes and I'd like to have another look. Well, best of luck. I mean, you'd be a welcome addition to the county. I'm sure they're desperate to have you here. Oh, thank you very much for all your efforts and all the team's efforts. We've thank had you. a really fun time. Yeah, we have. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Scott. you very much. Yes, why not? It's a bitter blow when we show lovely houses and none of them, and I understand why, but none of them quite add up to the dream house that we'd hope we'd find for Sue and Bob. But on one hand, I'm pretty confident that what they're looking for is not beyond the realms of possibility, and they will find it here in Devon. And I am grateful that we managed to prove to them that just because it's attached or it's in a village, they should go and look at it. It's very often the case people don't look at things on the internet because they have this fixed idea of where and what they want and unfortunately they miss out on lots of really great possibilities. So I hope they'll persevere and move to this beautiful county as soon as possible and I hope that you will join us next time for more Escape to the Country. After revisiting our first property, on reflection Bob and Sue felt the location wasn't right for them. But I'm happy to report that they've had an offer accepted on a house near Great Torrington, south of Biddeford. If you'd like to escape to the country in Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland or England and need our help, please apply online at bbc.co.uk.